Welcome back to Silicon Mountain Training. Hello, I'm Noreen Hart, and this is the second part of the Lotus 123 series. In this program, you will learn final graphs, creating databases, and an introduction to macros. The material is divided into three major sections. The first segment is how to create final graphs and access the print graph menu. The second segment is creating a database modifying and maintaining data records, and using the sort and query operations. The final part of this program is an introduction to macros. We'll include some simple macros to help to automate your spreadsheets. My goal is to give you a working knowledge of the advanced features so that you can use Lotus for more efficient presentations in the working environment. Now let's start by doing a quick review of graphs and their components. In our first tape, we discussed five types of graph. When you choose type from the graph menu, five options are displayed. When you select one of these options, the graph type is set and the graph menu is automatically restored. All graphs have two axes, the y-axis, which is the vertical left edge and the x-axis, which is the horizontal bottom edge. The exception to this, of course, is pie graphs. The origin of graphs is the intersection of the x and y axes. Use a zero origin in your graphs to avoid misinterpretation of graph results. These are the minimum requirements for creating a graph. At this point, you can view a graph. Now we will show you how to enhance the appearance of a basic graph. When you start to enhance your graphs, you should check frequently on the results. You can do this simply by using the F10 key, which will instantly redraw the graph with any updated information. To add descriptive information to a graph, you can use a few of the options such as legend, titles, and data labels from the options menu and the X option from the graph menu. The legend option is used to label the different symbols or colors assigned by the program to each data variable in the graph. They are permanently displayed at the bottom of the graph below the x-axis line. You can't relocate legends into another area. Next, let's look at the titles option. These titles include two general headings that are automatically centered and placed above the graph. These titles are defined with first and second options. There are also titles for the x-axis which is placed centered and above the x-axis legends. And the y-axis title is rotated 90 degrees so that it reads up the left side of the graph. The titles are entered the same way as legends. Using data labels allows you to place the actual data values that have been graphed or the labels contained in a range of cells within the area of the graph itself. When you use this option, you must specify the letter of the data variable to which these data labels are being applied. The cell range in the spreadsheet that contains the data labels, and finally, where the labels are positioned. There are five positioning options to choose from. Center, left, above, right, and below. The positioning options only apply to X, Y, and line graphs. Let's try using these options. First, let's create a spreadsheet with some data in it. Type five lines down and five lines across of whatever figures you want. Save the file as test and press enter. Next, we will create a graph type and then use the legend option. Then, type slash graph type, choose X for the XY graph, and then X for your X range. Type A1 through E1, and A for the A range. Type in A2 through E5. Now choose options, legend, A range, and type in the word data. Press enter, then quit once. 
Now let's view the graph. You will notice a symbol representing the numbers in the graph and the word data is beside the symbol. Use F10 to leave the graph and return to the menu. Now assign titles to the graph. Since we are still in the graph menu, choose the options menu again and use title. To define first heading, type F and type in test data and press enter. Choose titles again and define the second heading the same way. Type for XY and line graphs, then press enter. Now press escape to get back to the main graph menu and use view to see the new changes. F10 will allow you to leave the view screen. Finally, let's select Options, Data Label, choose A, and type in A2 through E5. Press Enter and select Quit. Press Escape to go back to the main graph menu and view to look at your graph. Press F10 again to exit. Let's save this graph and print it. At the graph menu, press save and call this graph Lotus 1 and press enter. Our file is now ready to be printed. All graph printing is controlled from a separate print graph program. This can be accessed from the Lotus Access System or directly from your DOS prompt. If you started Lotus 123 by using Lotus as the startup command, you can exit the program with slash quit yes command and then press the right arrow key to print graph and press return or type P. If you started Lotus 123 by using 123 as the startup command, you can exit the program with the slash quit yes command and then type pgraph at the DOS prompt. We will assume that you started with the Lotus Access System menu. The first time that you use the print graph program, you will have to configure your system to work with your hardware. Check on the right side of your screen under Hardware Setup. After the setup is correct, you can go to the menu and select image select. The screen will change and display all of the .pic graph files you have saved. Choose Lotus 1 and press enter. The screen will automatically go back to the menu. Make sure your printer is online and your paper is aligned to the top of form. Select go. The screen at this point will show the word printing. The speed of your dot matrix printer will probably be slower and laser printers will generally produce faster results. Now you've completed a final graph and a printout of your work. By experimenting with the various options, you can produce professional business graphs. Now let's go on and design and create a database. First, a database consists of three basic components. One, the single row, which contains the unique descriptions for each of the items in a column, is referred to as the field names. Two, the columns that contain the individual items of data are called fields. Three, a single record can be defined as one row of fields. When designing your own database, you should first decide what information you need to track and maintain. Now determine the best way to split up that information into separate fields for each record. After making all of these decisions, try and think of all the types of reports that you may want to produce from your database. This will help you determine what fields must be kept in individual columns. The last step in creating 
is to come up with field names to record columns that describe the data item. The field names should be unique and should fit within a single cell in the first row of your database. Since the database is created and maintained within the Lotus worksheet itself, you can construct any type of formula that allows you to perform calculations based on data in other fields of the same record. After you have planned your database, you can input your data. To help you understand how this process works, we will create a database for a mailing list. Select an area to work in and enter field names across the first row. Keep in mind all field names should be unique. Any repetition confuses Lotus when you search or sort the database. You may want to adjust your column width to accommodate any field name that may be longer than the default column width. Use the slash worksheet column set width option. Type in a number or use your right arrow key to increase the column width. To get better spacing and avoid crowded columns, insert blank columns to change the spacing between fields. This is done using slash worksheet insert and column. After you've changed your column widths, entered your field names and added spacing columns, you can add your records. Now let's try entering five or six records of names and addresses. Type the last name in column A1. Move over to the next column using the right arrow key and type first name. Move again and type address and keep typing until you have finished with the field name state. Now you've designed and created your own database. Maintaining your database is simple. The process for modifying fields in a database is the same for modifying the contents of a cell in any spreadsheet. You can either retype the information or by using the F2 key, edit the entry. To add and delete records in a database, use the same command for inserting and deleting rows in a spreadsheet. Insert a row under A3 using slash worksheet insert row and then press enter and type in a new name. Now we're going to delete row A3 by using slash worksheet delete row then press enter. To add a new field to a database go to the next available column. In our case this will be F1. You can then fill in the field for each record. Let's name this new field zip code. Type in some new zip codes. Selecting slash data sort produces options for sorting. To sort the database, you must first designate a data range. This must be long enough to include all of the records to be sorted and wide enough to include all of the fields in each record. Do not include your field name row in this range. The data range does not necessarily have to include the entire database. If part of the database already has the organization you want, or if you don't want to sort all of the records, you can sort only a portion of the database. After selecting the data range, you must specify the field for sorting. The primary key will sort the records you designate as the first sort. The secondary key is next, and the last question will be the sort order. Choose ascending or descending order. 
Let's do this on the database you have created. Start by using slash data sort data range and type in A2 through F6. Then press enter. Use the primary key, enter, and select column A2. Then press enter. On the top left side of your screen, you will see A or D. Select A, press enter, and the last step is go. This will sort your first column with the last names into a alphabetical listing. Your database should be alphabetized and in an A to Z order. The secondary key is optional. If your database contains enough of the same last names, you may want to sort with the secondary key to sort the first names. You can add a record to an alphabetized name and address list database without having to insert a row manually to place the new record in the proper position. Simply add the new record to the bottom of the database Then expand the data range and sort the database again by last name. You can sort more than two fields, however, it involves several steps. You can bypass this limitation by using the program string capabilities. For example, suppose you want to resort the last name, city, and state. You can sort the records to first focus on city, then on state, and then by last name. Certain rules must be followed to achieve this. First, you must create a new field and enter a string formula. Second, all fields joined in the string must be labels or converted to labels. Next, if the contents of the stringed fields are not the same size, you must make adjustments to the string formula. Then, you must copy the string formula to all records in the sort. Finally, after you complete the string setup, you will sort on the new field. To illustrate the concept of using string capabilities, we will sort the records in your database. As the first step in the sort process, we will create a new field and enter a string formula. Enter the field name, new sort, in cell G1. Then enter the formula apostrophe plus E2 and quotation mark, space, space, quotation mark, and, D2, and, quotation mark, space, space, quotation mark, and, A2, in cell G2. Next, you adjust your column width to accommodate the entire string. Press slash, worksheet, column set width, and use your arrow key to extend the column or type in a number. Now copy the formula down to G6. Use slash, copy, enter, So far, you have entered the string formula and copied to all the records. Next, 
Change the new sort column from labels to values. Specify the range G2 through G6 as both the range to copy from and the range to copy to. This step converts all the formulas to values. Press slash range value G2 through G6 and the range to copy to as the same. Setup of the string sort is now complete. To begin sort operation, choose slash data sort data range and specify the range A2 through G6. Notice that you have included the new field with the string formula. Select primary key and choose A2, then choose ascending order. Press G for go and watch the field sort. You should now have the listing of state as your primary sort, city as your secondary sort, and the last name alphabetically. You have learned how to use the main data menu sort option to reorganize your information from the database by sorting records according to key fields. Now we will learn how to use the query operation. This is the menu's other data retrieval command used to search for records and then edit, extract, or delete the records you find. Let's use your database and suppose an address needs to be changed. To do this, you select slash data query. You can use the first three options to specify ranges appropriate to the search conditions. Input and criterion, which give the locations of the search area and the search conditions, must be specified in all query operations. The output range will be used only when you select a query that copies records or parts of records to an area outside the database. Determine the input range that you would like to search. Whether you search all or only a part of the database, you must include the field name row. To establish the criterion range, enter in a blank column the field name, and underneath that, the contents of a field you are trying to find. For example, in our database, I have an address of 123 Main, and I want to change this address. First, I would type in a blank column, in this case, H1, the field name address. And underneath, the address I want to change. This is the range you would specify in the criterion. Now we'll go back to the data query menu. The last two options indicates the end of the current search operation. Reset removes all previous search related ranges so that you can select a different search location and condition. Quit returns you to the main data menu. The four middle options perform search functions. Find moves down and positions the cursor on the records that match given criteria. You can enter or change data in the records as you move the cursor through the item. Extract creates copies in another area of the worksheet. All or some of the fields in certain records that match given criteria. Unique is similar to extract, but identifies that some of the field contents may be duplicates of other cell entries in the same field. Unique eliminates duplicates as entries are copied to an output range. Delete erases from a database all the records that match given criteria and shifts the remaining records to fill in the gaps that remain. Before selecting unique, or extract commands, you must also specify the output range. To search for the data, 1, 2, 3, main, I would select find from the data query menu. 
Remember to first designate the input range and the criterion range. Press Find and the line will be highlighted. The cursor will rest on the first record that meets the specified criterion range. You can use the down arrow key and the next record that has the same criterion will be highlighted. To end the Find operation and return to the Data Query menu, press Enter or Escape. The Find command has limited use, especially in a large database, because the command must scroll through the entire file if you want to view each record that meets the specified criterion. As an alternative to Find, you can use Extract to copy to a blank area of the worksheet only those records that meet the criteria. However, before you extract data, you must define an output range. The output range must be large enough to retain all the records that you've extracted or extract will abort. The unique command is used to copy into the output area only a small portion of each record that meets the criterion. For example, if you wanted a particular state, you would specify the field name and under that, put the name of the state for the criterion. Next, press Unique and your output range would contain all the records of the particular state you have chosen. If you want a fast alternative to delete certain records from your database, you can simply specify input and the conditions for the criterion range and then use the delete operation. Our final segment in this program is introduction to macros. The first step in creating a macro is to outline its functions, then copy these into a set of keystroke and command instructions that can be read by Lotus 123. Finally, decide where to locate the instructions on a worksheet. You will often begin this process by going through the command keystrokes manually and writing down each command and prompt you experience. After you have written this, you can duplicate any necessary keystrokes into a Lotus 123 macro expression. All macro keystrokes and commands must be entered in the worksheet as labels. This means your macro entries are always prefixed with an apostrophe so that they can be entered in the cell as label mode. Before you can run a macro, you must assign a range name to the first cell in the macro. In 123, this range name must be an apostrophe backslash followed by single letter A to Z. Our first macro will change all the columns to width of 20. The command would be slash worksheet global column set width to 20 tilde if done manually. If you follow this procedure, you will create your first macro. Start at the bottom of the spreadsheet and type in the macro column apostrophe slash worksheet global column 20 and a tilde. Now we need to name our macro. Press slash range name create then type in backslash A and press enter. The range should only be the actual macro itself and not its range name. To activate this macro, press the Alt key and the letter A. Your worksheet should now have 20 spaces in each column. And that's all there is to writing macros. Look for our final program in the series of Lotus 123 on advanced macros and Lotus command language. The tape will explain macro libraries, documenting, and debugging the programs. The command language will show you how to customize and automate your spreadsheets. I want to thank you for joining me and viewing this program. Look to Silicon Mountain for all your computer training needs.